Hi, welcome back to part 2 of our video. Um, previously part 1, uh, we are installing a battery isolator onto the engine bay of our Jeep JL Wrangler. And um, this is so that uh, it is able to separate um, an additional battery, additional car battery that I'm going to install in the boot into two separate batteries when the car is switched off. So in that case, it actually protects the car's main battery from being damaged and over draining. And secondly, it also allows me to actually um, charge both batteries at the same time when the car is switched on. So now, where we left off um, from the previous part is that um, we have now mounted our isolator nicely onto the engine engine bay and this um, mount that I fabricated seems to be holding up quite well. Um, I have actually uh, used a cable tie as you can see over here to actually um, reinforce this uh, isolator uh, as you know when you're traveling on the road there are a lot of uh, bumps and um, you know so um, just to give you a brief recap what I've done is I have actually um, connected okay the positive terminal of the main battery which is also connected to the alternator of the car okay into a 300 amp fuse which will um, disconnect okay uh, in case um, there's over current and from here we come all the way out and we connected it to one um, terminal of the isolator and on the other terminal of the isolator I've connected another uh, uh, red wire okay go all the way in through the firewall all the way to the boot of the um, my Jeep Wrangler so um, why do you have to actually bypass this uh, isolator is that like I say um, this actually protects the both batteries from uh, draining each other out and also it uh, serves as an um, isolator to isolate the two batteries uh, when your car is switched off okay so what I'm going to do now is there are two more things that I have not yet um, connected onto this isolator to activate it okay one being um, the wire to that goes to the ACC of the car um, because that is actually the signal to tell the isolator that the car is switched on alternator is charging and to actually connect up the two batteries together and of course when the car is switched off you'll tell the isolator that okay the car is switched off um, it's time to disconnect the two batteries and separate them out and on the other side of this um, isolator this is where we are going to ground the isolator and I've identified a port over here um, this area here um, to actually be the grounding um, place that I'm going to um, mount the grounding wire to another alternative uh, area will be this boat over here they can act as a ground too um, so I depends on the ground wire that I've actually um, made this is the ground wire that I've made and um, this wire which we'll call it the ACC wire uh, this is actually uh, you went through the firewall Okay, into the cigarette lighter plug in my car because the cigarette lighter plug only switches on when the engine ignition is on so that will make a very good ACC uh, outlet and what we're going to do next is that we are going to be crimping this uh, terminal onto this uh, ACC plug so that we can actually um, connect it onto the isolator so we'll go ahead uh, by stripping the wire here so let's get about doing it Okay, using a wire stripper, strip out the copper wire strands, okay, twist it to give it a solid feel, and then put it into the connector, and then using a battery crimper, I mean a terminal crimper, we are going to crimp this um, wire to this uh, connector, and we are done and there you have it, you have this um, outlet here which now we are going to connect it over here um, I think it's a bit tough to capture the angle so I'm going to take over the camera and show you guys what I mean okay so like I said these are the four ports of the isolator okay two of them is already connected now, 
from these two ports, one of them is actually the ACC wire which I'm going to install now. So I'm going to put it in. Okay. And then I'm going to put the spring washer followed by the 8mm nut. And we're going to hand tighten it first. Okay. And next, we are going to use the ground wire to connect it um, to this port over here. Okay. So I'm going to remove the 8mm nut. Remove the spring washer. And then taking my ground wire, I'm going to place it here and reinstall back everything, the spring washer and the nut and we'll hand tighten it. Okay, so let us uh, take a 8mm uh, socket wrench and tighten up the nut so that uh, everything is fixed in. So using a socket wrench, we are going to Tighten down. Okay. Okay, we are done with the tightening. And what we're going to do next is we're going to ground this wire um, to this port over here. So I'm going to run my wires properly. Um, I am very particular about wires. So um, I don't like loose wires hanging around. So now using a 10mm socket wrench, we are going to remove this uh, bolt over here. And for a while, loosen it. Uh, it will be a good idea to be using a deep socket wrench because um, this uh, bolt here is kind of long um, this bolt over here is kind of long so it's uh, actually eating into my uh, socket so let me loosen it up Then I'm going to put my ground in, okay, um, but it seems like this uh, hole here, it is not uh, big enough, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to widen this hole, just let me go and get a pair of scissors and uh, I'll show you how to, give me a while. Hey guys, I'm back with uh, scissors and um, just a tip, if you ever have a hole that is not big enough to actually uh, go through this uh, any bolt, okay, what I recommend doing is I'm going to snip off a portion of it like that, one, and then I'm going to snip off the other portion, okay, and now we actually have a uh, crescent instead of a ring and let us uh, just uh, readjust this uh, metal back to its uh, original state so now you have it now we, instead of a enclosed circle we actually have an open circle and what we are going to do is we are going to okay let us widen the circle a bit the semicircle let us widen it okay And the other side, same thing. Okay, now that you can see that this uh, semicircle is now widened up, so let's see if we can go through. Yeah. So let us go ahead and place this um, just a little bit more. Um, I'm going to crimp off a little bit more metal to open up the ends okay and we will put it in okay so now you can see that it's nicely um, in the boat and now we are going to fix back our nut and 
let me place the nut back okay and using a 10 mm socket we are going to tighten the nut do not over tighten because uh, you run the risk of uh, breaking the bolt so just um, hand tight will do and yep okay so now let me take over the camera again to give you guys a clearer picture of what I've done so okay so now um, this terminal here is actually the ground wire so I've actually ran it down and up and connect it to the chassis ground uh, terminal and then I've connected this side of the um, isolator to the ACC uh, wire that uh, I've actually um, go through the firewall into the back of the cigarette lighter socket so um, we are done here in the engine bay of what we need to do um, I'm going to keep this uh, fuse here open I'm not going to flip it up because um, we might be working on things and it's not uh, it might be dangerous to actually have a live uh, positive wire so we'll keep this fuse uh, at this position and when we have installed up everything we will go ahead to flip this blue tab up to activate the fuse and um, now that we have done what we need to do in the engine bay all you have to do is tidy up the cables using cable ties uh, we will uh, which I will do off screen to save time so um, once you tighten up everything with cable ties uh, and make sure that nothing is moving everything is uh, nicely uh, installed um, then we will go on to the boot and we will be putting our battery into the boot and also um, connect up the battery into this circuit and then after that we are going to use a voltage meter to test out the two voltage in the separate batteries, in the main battery and the secondary battery that I've installed okay, to see whether there's a difference and after that I'm going to switch on the car to activate the isolator so that it charges both batteries and um, we'll do a test on that and see if uh, both batteries are getting the full charge from the alternator so now we'll move on to the um, indoors because we need to set up the battery uh, we need to connect up some connectors for the battery and uh, prep the battery up before we actually install it to the boot. So now let's go in. Now that we have actually um, done up the car, what we're going to do now is to, this is a 200 AH uh, car battery and uh, this will be the battery I'll be installing in the boot of my car. So um, let's set this battery up. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a um, connector using the remaining uh, battery cables and I'm actually going to crimp out a plug so that I can connect it to my plug in the boot that I've done up already so um, before we do that uh, let me tell you what I'm going to do in summary so um, I'm going to measure a length probably around this this long and I'm going to expose the two ends of the uh, copper wires so one end as you know will crimp it onto this uh, connector pin and then we are going to um, crimp it onto the wire before we insert it into the plug and uh, to create the plug and on the other end what I've got here is this uh, battery terminal um, this battery terminal is um, you can just get it off eBay or any one of your uh, car accessory shops so um, the battery terminal that I picked today is actually a coupling type so there's no need to tighten any bolts um, so let's have a look at this thing so as you can see um, the, for this terminal uh, it actually uh, crimps on onto the battery pole and over here which you can see is where we will actually um, connect the end of the copper wire here and then we will use these two screws to actually tighten it down so that um, it's held in place then we will actually uh, put it back onto the battery and we will create a plug for this uh, battery and then we will place the battery at the boot of our car connect up everything and then 
we will just do a short test to see if the isolator works and this uh, second car battery um, is it functional so uh, let's get started so what we are going to do now is um, taking uh, scissors I'm going to cut out this um, wire and there is no preferred length uh, it is up to you guys how long you want this wire to be and um, let's go ahead and start so now using a cutter we are going to cut out the length um, which is around here and this being a very good quality copper wire it's not so easy to cut it through so you need some strength and um, we'll cut out the black portion too uh, line it up and um, measure around the same length and we'll go ahead and snip it off okay so once we are done with this we can leave these wires aside uh, we won't be needing them um, but in case that you guys are planning to do uh, to have two or more batteries um, you can make more connectors and uh, it will fit in nicely so that you can just change the battery um, without actually uh, having to do much work you can just unplug the connectors change a new battery in and plug back the connectors so um, now I'm going to expose the copper wire on uh, both sides so this is how we'll do it okay that's one side and that's another side okay we'll do it the same thing on the negative wire and now that we've uh, strip the ends of the wires uh, I am going to crimp the pins for the plug onto one end and let's uh, shift this battery aside by the way a uh, 200AH battery um, is very heavy I think it's more than 20kg so uh, please don't hurt your back when you're carrying it around um, so let's shift it and get our crimping tool this uh, big and we will clear the tabletop so how it's going to work is okay I'm going to um, twist the cable copper wire strands to make sure that it's uh, tight and solid then I'm going to put in this uh, pin over here and I'm going to open up this thing okay position it nicely and we are going to crimp it it's not easy because um, the metal is very hard so okay that's one and for me I like to do a double crimp this is to ensure that um, there's no chance that this uh, cable um, it's going to come up from this pin so now that we have crimped it on one side I'm going to crimp it on the other side so that will be an additional uh, security and let's sorry about that like I say you need uh, quite a lot of strength so let's push it down Okay, there we have it. Now, let's have a look at uh, the results. So as you can see, this wire is now firmly crimped onto this uh, plug pin and it's crimped on both sides. So it's a very solid uh, crimping, it will not come out. Okay, and we'll do the same for the black wire. Okay, um, now that we have uh, crimped the positive and negative wires, um, I'm going to put the, the crimping tool one side. Uh, you do not need this anymore because uh, that's the end of uh, working on the terminals. So now, using the plug casing, 
uh, we are going to you can see that for this plug every plug casing there's a positive and a negative um, indication here so that you do not get mixed up you don't um, you know connect the pins wrongly so the red pin being the positive will go into this side and we'll go ahead to actually uh, push it in so let's uh, align the pins Okay, and we push it in. You, same thing, you need a little bit of uh, strength and you hear that click and now you know that the pin is uh, fully seated. You can give it a tap and the pin will not actually come out. And now uh, we move on to the negative one. Let's uh, push it in. So um, hear the click you know that it's okay properly seated and there you have it uh, we have just created uh, another plug end and um, something I forgot to show you in part one when we were crimping the plug um, in the boot is that this um, plugs actually come with this uh, cover dust cover or we call it the weather weatherproof cover that you can actually protect your uh, plugs when they are left exposed um, like that, so let's also install it on. So you put this tail in, and then you just have to cover it up. Okay, there you have it. And now, uh, for the next step, we are actually going to crimp the other end of the terminal of the cables. Okay, to this um, lug lug holders, uh, battery terminal holders. I mean, so this is for the negative. And the positive one, I think it fell to the floor. Wow, okay, here it is. Uh, please do note that, um, please do note that uh, for all car batteries, okay, the positive side for the terminal is always uh, slightly bigger than the negative side. So there's no way you can connect the negative uh, terminal pin onto the positive end and uh, vice versa. So right now what we are going to do this side is we are going to connect the ends of this uh, cable attach it to the quick coupling for the battery terminals and you can see that um, if you come closer um, you can see that actually uh, the wires will be held in place by these two uh, bolts um, so we will proceed to remove them with a screwdriver or um, electronic screwdriver so Let's remove it. Okay, um, let's see if uh, it's able to go in. I think it's a little bit too thin. So what we're going to do is we're going to fully take out the bolts so that uh, we can do a proper cream. And like I say, always twist the copper strands tightly so that there are no stray strands coming out and stuff like that and what we're going to do is we're going to sit the end of this um, copper strand nicely and firmly onto the um, battery terminal connector then what we're going to do is we're going to use the other side and we are going to connect the bolts Okay, let's use this okay. and on the other side too we are going to be connecting the bolt okay and you can see that um, actually now um, you just have to tighten these two bolts to actually um, seat the ends of the copper terminal nicely um, but I think I need to push this a bit more in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to release it okay so now that we are fully in Turn it up and okay. 
Okay, you make sure the two bolts are balanced so that uh, it's equal uh, crimping force. Okay, um, a bit more. Okay, so now you can see what we have done is we have created um, the battery end, battery terminal end of the charging wire. And you can see that uh, it is crimped properly, it's not going to pull out. So we'll leave this one side and we'll work on the negative side of the terminal. And same thing, twist it to make sure that the copper strands are not uh, loose, make sure that it's tight. Okay, after you are done, remove the bolt. Be sure not to actually uh, strip the strip the bolt because um, for these uh, connectors, they are actually using this uh, Phillips screw plus design, which I'm not really a fan of. Um, I would prefer it if it was a hexagon a hexagon um, bolt. So, but nevertheless, we have uh, completed the installation for this uh, battery terminal ends uh, clip, and we will now go ahead. To actually crimp, I mean to attach the battery terminal ends onto the battery itself. So let's bring the battery back to the middle. Like I say, it's very heavy, so um, please be careful when you are moving the battery around. So now we will actually uh, attach the positive side to the positive end of the battery. Okay, and we are going to attach. And then we're going to attach the negative side to the negative end of the battery and what we're, how to tighten it is we are going to push it down but that brings me to one more uh, thing which is uh, as you know this battery is going to be um, acting as a power for my fridge which actually has a 12 volt uh, secret lighter plug which I actually prepared the socket over here same thing you can get this on eBay at a not it's not very expensive so same thing this uh, cigarette lighter plug uh, socket comes with a nice cap so that prevents uh, corrosion or dirt or debris or even water from going in but let's keep it closed for now and you can see that this uh, cigarette lighter comes with an inline fuse and this fuse is actually uh, rated at 20 amps so um, that's more than enough to power a fridge so what we're going to do now is um, we are going to be attaching this um, to the respective terminals um, the positive over here and the negative here but as you can see what we have done just now is that we have already tightened the screws onto this uh, thing what I wanted to do was um, to actually connect this over here uh, together to the battery terminal clip so looks like I have to backtrack I have to remove this uh, screw uh, put this in and then tighten it again so we'll start with the negative pole Tightening of the bolts to the battery terminal clips. Okay, we'll go ahead now to attach the terminals properly to the battery. So, this is the positive, and how we are going to do it is um, all you have to do because this is a coupling, you don't have to uh, tighten any bolts, all you have to do is just press down firmly there you have it okay and for the negative side do the same press down firmly okay there you have it and we have completed <coughs> fixing up a battery terminal 
that is um, able to plug in into the plug that we have done uh, at the back of my Jeep Wrangler so you can plug it in and charge the battery and yet at the same time you have this um, cigarette lighter socket that you can plug your accessories in your um, whatever things that you want to connect to it to the second battery so now we are done here we are going to proceed back to the car okay now that we have uh, finished um, setting up the battery connecting it properly uh, we'll move on to the boot of our JL Wrangler and you can see that this is the plug that I've installed uh, on the part one previously and um, as you can see I've forgotten to put on the rubber um, cap so I'm going to do so now so give me a while then after that we can continue on with our video so finish we are done okay so now you can see that this is actually uh, it comes with a loop that actually lets you uh, so you don't lose your cover uh, it lets it hang to the side and now we will go on to put our battery into the boot and then uh, position it properly then we will connect up the connector do not worry about any short circuit or anything because like I said I have not uh, actually activated the fuse in the engine bay I will do so after I've connected everything and double checked everything so what I'm going to do now is I will carry this battery into the boot and this is not a very light battery so if you are crazy enough to get a big battery like me um, I will suggest that either you get someone to help you carry the battery in or um, you do it yourself in a proper posture so that you do not hurt your back so we shall now go ahead to lift up the battery one two Yep, then we're going to put it onto the boot. Okay, so once you have positioned the battery where you want it to be, so I will position the battery over here. Um, then I'm going to put my fridge uh, in front. So, um, with that being said, um, let us now go ahead. Okay, to connect up the plugs so we will remove the ends the cap and we will match the plug and clip it in you hear the click it's a very solid click so now you can see that uh, we have actually connected um, this secondary battery um, to the front main battery of our my JL Wrangler and um, Let's just uh, tidy it up a bit. Okay, we can uh, leave this uh, at the side so that it doesn't uh, hinder much. Okay, and you can see that I have a 12 volt socket, cigarette lighter socket over here, which I'm going to leave it here. The fridge will connect to this uh, 12 volt socket later. And right now, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to go ahead to go. Um, to the engine bay to actually switch on the fuse uh, flip up the fuse and activate um, the isolator by turning on the car but before we do that I would like to take a voltage reading of both batteries um, to show you guys that um, it is of a different uh, it's separated it's different so um, let me get my voltmeter Okay, um, using a voltmeter, we will go ahead to test the voltage in this uh, battery. So, um, maybe you will want to uh, focus on the voltage while I connect up the... Um, sorry, let me see it here. The cables are not long enough. So, we will just uh, connect the two ends. You can see now this uh, car battery's voltage is 12.74 uh, volts. Okay, and uh, now we'll go on to the front battery, main battery of the car to see um, what's the voltage. So you can see um, the voltage right now that uh, reads on the voltmeter 
is a 12.12 so the two batteries are not uh, linked they are not connected as of now um, they are reading two different voltages so now um, I will go ahead to flip up this uh, fuse and I'm going to take a reading again here and at the back to make sure that they are still not connected because this isolator is supposed to separate them when the car is switched off so we'll go ahead and flip up the fuse and let us uh, measure the voltage once again uh, since we're in the front we'll do the front one first you can see that it is still reading 12.12 12.11 12.11 and yeah 12.12 and now we'll go to the boot and uh, check out the voltage there to see if uh, it's still the same So let us test it out over here and you can see that the voltage here is 12.73 so as you can see um, they are acting as two independent batteries uh, now so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead to turn on the engine of the car and um, we'll see whether this uh, how the voltage reading goes so give me a while okay so now that I've uh, turned on the car I'm going to go ahead to measure the voltage on these two terminals over here to see if the car alternator is indeed uh, charging the battery so now you can see that the reading goes up to 13.71 so it can show that uh, right now the secondary battery that I just installed is being charged by the Jeep's alternator and of course now I'll go to the front of the engine bay to read the voltage of the main battery so let's go Here. And now you can see that um, the reading here is uh, 13.82 That means uh, the main battery is also being charged right now And um, this is working So we'll do a test um, Let's say if you were to break the fuse um, Will it uh, actually um, cause the rear battery to not receive any charge at all So now we'll go ahead so press this red button on this fuse okay over here and then um, let me show it to you so you got to press the red button here to break the fuse okay you can see that now that the fuse is broken we'll go to the boot of the car to see that while the car is running um, will this um, secondary battery that has been stopped be charging so let's go on to the boot Now that the fuse is switched off, you can see that this uh, the voltage of this uh, battery has gone down from uh, 13.7 down to 13.03. That means uh, this battery now is currently not receiving any charge at all. Um, it's not matching the voltage on the front, um, the main battery. So uh, you can see that that's how the fuse works. Uh, let's say there's an overdrawing of uh, amperage from uh, in, in this system okay that fuse is going to break it's going to blow and um, we can simply reset it by pushing it up the blue tab again so here you can see that we have actually completed insta installing um, secondary battery in my Jeep JL Wrangler Rubicon and um, I'm very happy that I can finally power my fridge Okay, without draining the main battery, especially when the car is switched off. Um, just to let you know, um, I do my videos uh, anywhere I can. Car parks, uh, my home car park, uh, back alley like this, or even indoors in my office. Um, this is just to show you that actually modding and changing certain parts of the Jeep need not uh, have the workshop environment. Um, it can be done anywhere, anytime, as long as you have the proper tools at a proper place to actually uh, do it so of course um, installing things such as a leaf kit or changing the rims and tires that will definitely require to be in a workshop condition uh, because you need the equipment you need the car lift 
and, uh, and, and of course uh, you need uh, more um, support equipment to actually uh, get the mod started and done but uh, so far what I've done to me and Emily's uh, JL Wrangler Rubicon uh, these are all relatively easy you don't need a workshop to actually uh, work on it so I hope you guys enjoy this episode um, and of this uh, JL uh, Jeep journal and uh, we hope to install more mods in the near future we are still waiting on some parts as I say due to the COVID-19 situation that's happening around the world right now um, it's Parts are taking forever to reach us, and uh, but rest assured, we have a lot of uh, interesting projects coming up to be installed on my JL, JL Wrangler and also on Emily's JL Wrangler. So um, thanks a lot. Goodbye. Thank you.